Hello everyone, welcome to JC eConnect channel. So in this class, we'll discuss about the safety things in the construction. Basically, these uh, safety things are much more essential in the construction industry so that uh, when you adopted the safety precautions in the construction, we can reduce the number of uh, accidents in the construction industry. So moving on to the concept that is safety lacuna in Indian construction industry. So basically, lacuna is nothing but which is a blank space or a missing part. So when a safety is missing in the construction industry and how exactly it is going to react uh, to the current scenario. Because nowadays you can see high rise buildings and all about 100 story buildings. So in that case, uh, while working on the high story buildings, we need to prefer certain safety precautions there. Right? So when you fail to provide a safety things over there so of course because of wind speed because of negligency the accidents may take place that leads a death of employee or labor okay so what exactly the safety lacuna in indian construction industry can be there so that is the ignorance about the own safety first if you are working anywhere in the construction industry you need to take care of safety precautions things with a much essential in nature okay and then the lack of training facilities for safety even though they have adopted the safety but if they don't know how to use that those things again it leads the accident part in the construction industry so we should have better training to use those safety precautions and discontinuity in a regular employment because once you start working with uh, a certain part and if you shift your work or if you discontinue that work again it's like what they you will be forgetting those things and that leads in the further construction works about the accidents and lack of uh, insurance scheme and uh, insufficient uh, safety equipment so here uh, lack of insurance scheme in the sense for every employee or for uh, every laborers we should have safety insurances that is provided by the Company. So something happens to them, so at least their family people can get survived by those insurances. And insufficient uh, safety equipment. So in the construction industry, you can see so many safety equipments like sunglasses, helmets, gum boots and all. So there it should be properly available to each and every person. Okay. So when you fail to provide those instruments or equipment sufficiently might be the accident lacuna or gap may can see in between the construction industry and uh, overworking so overworking that leads stress part in the labor or employee so that leads the, whatever the concentrations we can provide there that amount of concentration concentrations will be reduced when you start working over the time so that time again the accidents may take place that's also a part of safety lacuna and then improper communication system that is especially while giving the signals uh, to the high rise buildings especially when operating cranes and all so here we need to provide proper communication from uh, signaler to the operator so if, if they fail to communicate properly again that accidents may takes place that's also part of this safety lacuna and then safety measures for storage and handling of building materials so how exactly you need to provide the safety measurable things while storing the materials or while handling the building materials might be you can see so many building materials such as brick cement uh, lime etc etc so while storing those how exactly you need to provide the safety precautions things okay so we'll study one by one so first material you can consider cement so if you are storing cement, <coughs> those cement bags should be placed in a stacks on a raised platform which should be dry and impervious to the water so that no water movement can take place just below the cement bags. Okay, And with adequate waterproof roof covering so that any direct sunlight or uh, the rain water we should not react or we should not fall on those cement packs and at least 30 centimeter clearance from the any wall so if they are storing just they need to maintain around uh, 30 centimeter 
30 centimeter of gap from the wall portion so that is because of what so if any moisture content present in the wall so that directly reacts with the cement and that cement loses its property it will get started started to harden so that time that cement which loses its property so that which is not fit for any binding code okay and then the stack should not be more than 12 bags of ice so once you start uh, <coughs> placing the cement bags one above the other up to 12 bags are permissible if more than that uh, the balance it, it may not be feasible so sometimes it may fall down while working on the particular platform so only 12 bags are sufficient one above the other so that one we can call it as a stacks and uh, where bulk handling of cement is undertaken protective marks should be provided to the workmen because you will take cement back from one place to other place and uh, you will not uh, treat them slowly means you will take the cement bag and you will throw there so somewhat the cement dust may get appear in the environment so that may lead a dangerous chemical activity within the human body so to reduce or to overcome those better to wear the protective mask for all the employees those who are working in such conditions and moving on to the next part that is lime that is calcium oxide what you can say that is CaO so while up using the lime the lime should be stored in a suitable shed to protect it from dampness so once dampness is nothing but the moisture content uh, might be which is present in the ground floor or might be which is present in the roof or might be it is present in with the wall so we need to store the lime in a such a way that whatever the dampness you can see it should not be reacted with the lime because once that <coughs> lime reacts with the dampness or moisture content or uh, sometimes h2o it start reacting so that time that calcium carbonate will get reacts and that liberates some amount of heat so again uh, it's like what it's not in use so you need to store in a suitable shed just to protect in front of dampness and it should not be stacked against any wall because sometimes it may get hardened with the moisture content of the wall so we need to maintain some gap between wall to the storing bag of this type <coughs> and storage of unslaked fat or semi hydraulic lime which is not desirable as it deteriorates by absorption of moisture from the atmosphere so here unslaked uh, fat or semi hydraulic lime which is nothing but uh, the partial mingle of this lime to the moisture content or unselected fat in the sense it is, which is rich in calcium oxide or in calcium what we can say so that time when it reacts with the water that is cao reacts with the h2o that uh, provides what calcium hydroxide that is caoh twice and along with this this heat will get liberated so whatever the process of liberation of the heat that one we should avoid in the construction phase and then masonry units such as bricks and all so these bricks it should be stacked at the site on level ground which is not more than 1.5 meter in height so only up to 1.5 meter height of bricks can be arranged one above the other and on top of 1.5 meter which is not permissible and uh, bricks of different types and classifications should be stacked separately so you have seen uh, so many different types of uh, bricks such as first class brick second class brick third class and fourth class. so each and uh, every bricks however it will get manufactured and it will be stored in a different particular place okay and uh, here similarly the stone blocks and concrete blocks should be stored in a stacks that avoiding a topping of stacks as well as crushing of the lowest layer of the block so we need to take care a lot of responsibility while storing these masonry units and then aggregate so this aggregate like sand, sulki, cinder and uh, coarse aggregate like uh, time chips, brick ballast and they should be stacked on a hard surface or platform in a way to prevent the admixture of clay, dust, vegetable and other foreign materials. So it should not react with uh, any of the foreign materials such as uh, vegetable waste, dust or uh, whatever the soil you can see on the ground. So it should be free from those all uh, 
soil materials or foreign materials such that at the time of using in concrete or uh, in any other part of the construction works it should be free from the foreign materials so the any other foreign reactions it won't takes place in the construction part and then timber so timber should be piled in a stacks above the ground level by at least 15 cm with an air space of about 2.5 cm round can so it's nothing but what we need to maintain certain gaps from the earth to those stands because it should not react with the, any of the dampness which is present on the earth and then the width and height should not be exceeded 2 meter and the distance between the adjacent stack must be 20 cm at least so we need to maintain the distance between one stack to the other stacks such that it should not be overloaded with uh, the entire one stacks so we need to maintain certain uh, gaps between one stacks to other stacks and that height it should not be more than 2 meter and uh, distance have to be maintained at least 20 cm the stacks must be protected from the hot day wind or direct sun or rain because that uh, timber has a property of expanding when the certain amount of heat will get enter into the timber body so we need to maintain the standard temperature at the storage place so it will remains the same shape and size throughout the usage of that timber in the construction industry okay and then steel so this steel basically it will start get corrosion when it exposed to the environment okay so we need to prevent this one for from the corrosion purpose just by applying the galvanized uh, iron coating or uh, we need to maintain the constant environment of for this steel so the steel reinforcement it should be stored in a way to prevent the distortion and corrosion so it is desirable to coat reinforcements with cement wash just before staking to prevent the scaling and rusting so that is because of uh, continuous movement of alternative heat and uh, water so when it reacts with uh, heat and water so uh, obviously that rusting or corrosions what we can call will takes place and then door windows and frames so metal frames like aluminum frames wooden frames and prefabricated uh, frames of doors and windows should be stored in a upright positions because just to maintain slant increment i mean in the inclined surface so that any additional weightage it may damage that entire member and then safety measures in demolition of the building so if you start a demolition started demolition of a particular building so that time you need to take necessary precautions such as adjacent buildings or if any types of the other works are to going to be carried out so we need to take the necessary precautions so that we should not harm anything to the neighbors so before uh, beginning the actual work of the demolition a careful and detailed study of the structures to be demolished should be made so how exactly we need to do the demolition process and which method is preferable and uh, what are the adjacent buildings so which type of buildings they have so each and everything they need to study before starting the demolition process of the road and uh, while working out the plan of demolition the safety of the adjoining structures are must ensure it's not like if you are demolition demolishing a particular building and uh, that adjacent uh, buildings are nowhere concerned so if you start demolition that adjacent buildings have to be taken care a lot than your demolition building. and the final plan of sequence of operation that must be approved by the engineer in charge and the due permit must be obtained from the authority so here the, you need to get the permission before demolishing any building and you need to explain them that which type of the demolition of a building you are taking there and um, that entire procedure that how exactly they are going to be carried out and uh, whether it is approved permissible or not that one they will check and they will sign so that permission they need to take before demolition in the building and then prior to the demolition that suitable bracing shoring and they should be provided just to prevent uh, the accidental collapse of the building which has already been damaged by the fire flood or earthquake so suppose you have seen so many buildings uh, which are uh, already demolition just by earthquake or just by heavy rainfall or just by fire flood and all so that time they need to they have already weak structures 
just they need to remove those all uh, baked particles such as entire baked building materials so that time we need to provide necessary safety precautions things such that it should not disturb to the adjacent buildings or adjacent places and all safety appliances must be issued to the workers such as ear gloves and uh, sunglasses or uh, the safety glasses what we can see helmets because every single element whatever it will get demolition it may fall on the workers those are working just beside of that building so safety things are much necessary to avoid the accident rates then suitable safety precautions for the fire must be provided so suitable safety safety precautions for the fire because we, we don't know that at what time the fire will get catches so we need to take the necessary precautions which is caused by the fire and all so that will be much uh, essential to reduce the rate of accidents and plastic and during demolition so during the demolition which safety things we need to consider all materials of delicate nature like glass must be removed first because at the time of demolition might be you can use uh, blast plastic process so that time uh, when the blast will take place might be that the small glass pieces may harm the neighbors or uh, surrounding areas we don't know that at what force it will reaches and it will harm the current situation so whatever the glasses from the windows and all we need to remove it as much as possible and then we need to start the further process and then all openings should be bored up so if any openings are there uh, for that building so it should be preferably locked or uh, packed such that no other demolition material should passes from that particular border because it may harms to the other surrounding areas so again it, the it's causing the accidents by this demolition and then dust must be controlled by the suitable means to prevent harm to the workmen because we don't know that how much dust will get developed once we start started this demolition things so workmen send all they need to take the necessary safety precautions just to prevent that uh, dust particles which will get arise after the demolition and then adequate natural or artificial lighting and ventilations be provided for the workmen so that easily they can see the things what it is going to happen so that uh, no other accidents will take place while working in that closed building okay so that they need a preferable artificial lighting such as uh, headlights and all so that uh, just by taking that one to the helmet they can see the things which are happening just around them and then easy exit must be provided to arrange for quick evacuation of the workmen during emergency we don't know that uh, which type of uh, emergency may come that time might be the blast may take place might be the fire may get catches so that time they should have certain space to come out from that building so for a quick evacuation they need that safe place just to reach over there okay and the demolition should always proceed systematically story by story in the descending order okay so we need to demolition that one from top to bottom okay because we will be having some safety things when we started that one from top to bottom okay so that time we need to follow the standard procedures that uh, how exactly we need to demolish that member and uh, which are the safety precautions need to be taken care while demolishing those members so everything we need to follow before starting that i mean while demolishing that structure okay and uh, okay only this much for demolitioning of a thank you